Story Chat with John Fornoff, the art and passion of storytelling. Here's your host, Brian Bullabush. Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Story Chat with John Fornoff, our little corner of the Internet where we hope to teach and encourage you guys about the art and passion of storytelling. I'm here with my good friend, John Fornoff. How you doing, John? I'm doing great. Really sounding well. a, Sounding a little stuffy today. Uh, that's me. I'm a stuffy person. So, oh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got. I was experimenting with my background here. I was looking at. This looks a little weird, doesn't it? it looks like I got some. some kind of <laughs> yeah, you got a little crown going there. on. Yeah, a little. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's what that is. I don't know. It's like the bubble like crown. Mickey ears. Yeah, well, I don't know what it is. It's kind of weird, but it's kind of funny. So I just like, hey, that's kind of fun. Anyway, uh, I digress. I, I even started, and I'm already digressing. That's pretty bad. So, uh, what are we talking about today, Brian? We well. Um, <laughs> I had a question for you. Um, okay, cool. kind of, kind of going back to our initial episode of Story Chat. If you guys haven't heard that, uh, might cover a little bit of the same ground, but kind of want to do a little bit deeper of a delve into why John became a writer, uh, writer, storyteller, pen to paper, you name it. Why, mm -hmm. why did you go down that path? Like, what, what was the inspiration? Uh, good question. Uh, it could be a why or a how. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll cover both of them, maybe. Uh, it's just cool. like, uh, and so how did I become a writer anyway? That's, I, I thought you were, were talking about it a little bit before, and it, we thought it might help you as you're a writer and you're thinking about maybe getting into writing as a career. Maybe you're, you're starting into it or you're into it a little bit um, or you're into it a lot, whatever. I want to see if there's something we can do or I can do to tell you about my story and see if this will inspire you with your, with your writing and with your path. And actually, this applies to anything you do, not just writing, but any kind of uh, path you have, any kind of dream you have. So um, just think about this. Three questions to ask yourself. Is there, how would you like, well, let me, let me start this. How, how do you have a passion inside you? A passion, like a dream that keeps stirring in you. When you get around, it's like, man, I would love to do that. It could be with writing. Yes, obviously. That's kind of what we're talking about here at Story Chat. But is there something you're stirring in you? When you get around it, your heart beats a little faster. Is there something like that? And you just, it's just like, man, there's just something there. Maybe you don't articulate yet, but you get around it and you just get a little, get stirred up. Um, and how would you like to achieve that? How would you like to like get that thing, whatever that is? And would you like to know how to keep motivated? So there's some questions to think about. And I'll try to cover those as we're talking about my story. And what I love about doing story chat is I'm not like here to say, this is how you do things. It's like, I'm saying is, hey, this is how I did it. See if it'll help you. Okay. <laughs> that's that's kind of, I've been professionally writing since 2019, oh, 1999. So I've been at it for a while. Um, no, actually, before that, I started writing commercials and stuff in 1985. So I've been at it for a while, writing professional so over writing. over 35 years. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> but I but I love it. I, it's a it's a joy. I started in did, third did grade. Did it feel? Did it feel? Does it feel like over 35 years? Uh, it doesn't. I still feel like I'm, I'm I'm still in my 20s. In my in my in, <laughs> yeah. It's just like I don't know what it is. This is just it's how I am. Um, so started off when I was a kid. And I was a kid with a dream. My dream was to do audio dramas, believe it or not. So I had a, a cassette tape machine. And you guys know the story. I had a Panasonic RQ-399S cassette tape machine. And, um, and my dad got this for me, uh, for me and my sister, but I kind of took it over. <laughs> and, um, and I started making up stories. I had this uh, klutzy superhero character that ran into buildings when he was flying and stuff like that. And I would take my mom's, um, uh, I, I waited till my parents left. And then, oh, great, I get, get to do another one. So I, I would do these stories. And the, when the superhero ran into uh, um, a building or whatever, I'd have these pots and pans and stuff just, just fly everywhere. And so I would just knock them on the floor, and that was the sound. So it was, it, I just had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, weird little kid. But anyway, I wanted to do audio dramas. And the only problem was nobody was doing audio dramas. So it's like, this is a dream. It's like, a poor little kid, he's got this, this dream that will never come true kind of thing. My turning point came when I went to visit Focus and the Family. And um, the, I fast forward many years, okay? So I had this dream as a kid, right? And then when I'm in my, I don't know, my 30s, I think, um, I went to visit Focus and the Family, went to visit Adventures and Odyssey, and I got to meet Paul McCusker, who is one of the guys that helped, actually Phil Lawler and Steve Harris started it, and Paul came on soon after that. And so um, I started sending him ideas, for because I had ideas like all these years, I have ideas about doing audio drama, right? So I'd send him ideas like a list of five or ten ideas, and he was really encouraging. 
Uh, he said, these, these are good ideas. And Paul doesn't mess around. He doesn't like give you a bunch of um, accolades and stuff like that. He's not that kind of guy, but, but he was straight a coach. shooter. He was a straight shooter and he shot me straight. And um, so he, he, uh, he was encouraging. Um, <laughs> I kept sending him ideas for five, see how many years, five years, five years. I sent him ideas. So I just kept at it uh, mostly because my mom, my mom encouraged me. She said, I think there's something there for you. I well, think what, you what were you doing there. in the meantime? I was great question. I was uh, working in radio. So I worked in, I was a country music DJ. I was a news reporter. I was working for the Alabama radio network at one time, like a statewide radio network. I was a TV producer. I was the, Oh, when I worked for TV news, I was the vegetable reporter. That's a whole uh, other story. Veg vegetable. I was. I yes, got the, it. All right. I have to hear about that. Okay. <laughs> the intrepid, the intrepid vegetable reporter. Yes. I'm writing I was. that down. I reported on vegetables and um, yes, all the, all the, uh, yes. We'll talk more about that. It's, it's an exciting story. So, um, so I'm sending um, Paul these ideas and all of a sudden, five years later, like it was 1992, 1997, uh, they're going to have a writer's summit to invite new writers to come to Colorado Springs and talk with Phil Lawler and Dave Arnold and Paul McCusker, all these guys, just like talk with the guys, Marshall Younger, Younger was there, I think. Just, just every, it's like, wow, what an idea, right? What cool thing. So I put in my, you know, I got my ticket and all that. And after five years now, they canceled it. It's like, ah. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, oh, I, I, I I was so close to my dream, right? Right for Adventures and Odysseys, like the show. It's the dream show, right? Because they were doing, talk about auto drama, they're doing an amazing, amazing job with Adventures and Odyssey. So um, they canceled it because they weren't, they didn't like the writing that was coming. I don't know if that included mine, but anyway, I told Paul, I got this non refundable ticket. What do I do? And he says, let me talk to Dave. So he talked to Dave Arnold. And Dave says, come on. So anyway, I came. Came to Colorado Springs. I'm sitting there at this big table, you know, in the boardroom, you know, looking out over Pikes Peak. It's just beautiful. And I sent them, sent them, I gave them my ideas and they liked one of them. It's called Tornado. It's when a tornado hits Odyssey and this little girl named Mandy has her doll and she, uh, she sacrifices her doll to help the Rathbone family, which is, it's, it was kind of a cool story. Remember that, that was a you episode? Yeah. That's a great episode. That is oh, well, that is one. You. That's one of the ones that stick out in my brain because it's well, uh, hearing Bart Rathbone break. Oh yeah, yeah. That was um, that was an unusual moment. Yeah, it was just because Bart Rathbone is kind of the uh, what's the term the um the guy the the guy you, he's the shyster the yeah yeah the guy you look down on but kind of yeah. I mean the name says it all. He's a yeah, Bart, Bart Rathbone. Rathbone. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I got gotcha. you. At the time, I didn't realize that was the same voice actor as Tom Riley. Oh, I, and, and I, there's scenes where Tom, where uh, Walker Evans yeah. did both of them yeah. back together without cuts. I mean, he well, would go one voice or another. Yeah. Walker did an amazing job with that role yeah. because yeah. that moment was the moment that Bart Rathbone became a human to me. Oh, uh, wow. Until that point, he was a character. Wow. Oh, that means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. I, and Walker nailed it when he did it. Thank you. That was my, my, my very first episode. And uh, wow. Paul, Paul was my mentor. He, what a great mentor. He was so encouraging. And he, here's how, by the way, this is a note with mentoring. Um, when he was mentoring me, just kind of show me how the ropes, the storytelling and all that, he would do it this way. He said, um, he, he would say, um, you know, if it were me, I wouldn't do it that way. But if you really want to do it that way, you need to do this, this, and this. You need to solve these problems. And he he kind of got into my story and helped me tell the story with my voice. And I'll, I'll always look up to him for that. He was tremendously encouraging. All those five years he encouraged me when I was on board, he encouraged me. Uh, just was, a, and Phil Lawler later on uh, was, I just admired Phil for his, for his writing as well. And Phil was a tr tremendous help as far as like uh, helping me develop the comedy end of things. But th he, these guys were amazing. And I, I learned so much. So a dream job. I got it. Adventures Odyssey is awesome. So there's my story. And then I got laid off. <laughs> Unfortunately. So, so, so here, so you have the, uh, you, you have the story, you have the turning point, you have the mess with, I'm a little kid, you have the turning point. It's like, you know, I got this, I got this, uh, talk to Paul McCusker. And then all of a sudden I got invited. And all of a sudden I started writing for Adventures and Odyssey. I started writing for them. And then, um, I was working there for, for many years and then uh, they had this massive layoff at Focus. And um, I was part of that. I joined the team. 
So um, my friend, I had a friend that um, was laid off there from Focus, and he lost his house. He, uh, they, I think they, yeah, they foreclosed on his house. They repossessed his car, and he went bankrupt. I'm thinking, okay, I'm the next over the cliff, right? And it's like, so now I'm going through through another mess. You know, it's like, oh wow, I, here's my dream and just my dream job. I lost it. It's like, what's going to happen? But inside, I had this excitement in me. It didn't make sense. It's like, like something's going to turn here. I felt it inside. And so, um, I, John Campbell, friend of my uh, composer for Adventures in Odyssey, amazing guy. He started sending me uh, clients and stuff, and I started writing, started doing other audio dramas. And here's the cool thing. Um, within one year, I was debt free. It's like we had this goal of like twenty five thousand dollars were in debt because of business stuff, and all of a sudden it's like boom, wiped out in one year after getting yeah. laid off. It's like what? And so, um, and then after that, I helped launch Lamplighter Theater. I got to work with the extraordinary adventures of Gia Hinty. Went to London and in LA, all that kind of stuff, uh, and many more. I work. I got to work on a total of fifteen audio dramas. 15 of them. And, and I got to launch seven of those. And so if I stayed there at, at Adventures Odyssey, I never would have gotten those other opportunities. So it's like, oh, I lost my job, but look what, look what God did. So how did I get there? What, now I'm doing it. I'm, I'm working with um, Unshackled, the oldest radio drama ever. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm working with uh, Jonathan Park, the Adventum. Um, I work with um, Down Gilead Lane. I work with Kids Corner. There's a lot, a lot of them in there. So I don't want to leave anybody out. So I'll just stop right, right, right there. But it's a, I work with a lot of audio dramas. It just they know who they are. It. Yeah, they know who they are. Okay. <laughs> so how do you? How did I do that? How did I do that? Well, here's here's to achieve your dream, to go after it. Keep it in front of you. Keep the picture in front of you. I've got a vision board, and I've got this little room where I am, you know. But I have this vision board. The vision board is your window in the future, and you make it. Like put pictures on there. Where do you want to be five years, one year from now and five years from now? Just kind of do it like that. Mm. Put the picture in front of you. Even if you have, don't have a vision board, just picture it yourself. But there's something about putting it on the board. Um, the Bible says, make the vision clear, put it on tablets, right? So hmm. very advanced. They're thinking about technology back then, put it on tablets. Huh? Okay. <laughs> well, well so anyway, so, um, anyway. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We'll go with that. It's in the original hero. Uh, trust me. So anyway, it has to do with aliens, but we'll get into that later. Uh, so anyway. oh, okay, <laughs> we're going there. <laughs> no, now, is this we Apple not. or Samsung <laughs> tablets? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't. Want, I want to raise uh, controversy here. We, we like to keep things. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, I get this vision board. Right there's something about when you see it and you picture it, your mind already starts working toward that. So picture it. That's the number one thing I can do. Picture it mm. in your mind. Um, also, another thing, let's say your dream is, um, oh, to get a house or get a car, whatever it is, get, get around that car, go to the showroom, go to the car, you know what I mean? Get around that dream house. Go, like I wanted to work for Adventures in Odyssey. So what did I do? I went to Adventures in Odyssey. I got to be, get around your dream, get around people that are doing what you want to do. All right. So that's part of picturing it in your mind. Uh, two, so picture it. Two, try the doorknob. What do I mean by that? It's like, Take one step toward your dream. Just, I, I dare you. I challenge you. Take one step toward your dream and see what happens. What happens is you take one step, all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, something. And then take the next step. But don't worry about all those other steps. Just take one step and see what happens. So here's what's going to happen. Either there's going to be like, wow, something happened. That's opening up other doors. Or it's going to slam in your face. So now you're going to test how much fire you have. OK, when a door slams in your face, you step to your dream, you're going to find out how, if you really, really want to go after that dream. Mm. And if you do, you're going to face the fire. You're going to go through that and you're going to keep keep knocking on doors. Try the doorknob. And the third thing is persist. Um, so it's, I kept the picture in front of me. I wanted to do audio drama as a kid. I was thinking when I was doing these audio dramas, my cassette tape machine, I was thinking, about, I would love to do this for a look. I picture, my, picture myself in a studio, you know, and guess what I did? I went to a recording studio and I recorded with my friend. So I had, so I got a microphone, professional microphone, you know, professional everything, you know, and uh, we did sound effects, the whole thing. And my friend Tad Denson had this recording studio in, in Mobile, Dogwood Studios. And I got to launch um, my Captain Laser Radio Adventures series. And it was just a blast. So I got to, so I got the picture, 
I tried the doorknob. I went one step further with focus. What I did was went to visit Adventures in Odyssey. Take take that action step. Take one step forward toward toward your dream. All right. And the third thing is persist. Keep going after it. With uh, with Adventures in Odyssey, I did it for five years. I kept sending ideas. Right. All right. And when I got laid off, which is like oh, that's the bummer part of the story. Um, still, I still have a bunch of friends there. It's it's still good. We're, but it just it's it was hard, you know. But yeah. look what God did, you know. Yeah. So uh, persist. Just keep persisting after that. Don't give up on that dream. Um, just keep persisting. So those are three things. Keep the picture in front of you. Try the doorknob. Keep persisting. And here's I'm going to leave you with an action item. All right. Here's an action item for you. Here's a challenge for you. So it's a little different story chat. This one is more of a I wouldn't call it a pep talk because pep talk sounds kind of, I don't know. It's just, I really want to challenge you to go after your dreams. Like, I don't want you to be toward the end of your life and say, if I had just, if I had only, don't, oh, I don't want you to say those words. I want you to say, you know what? I gave it a try. Maybe I gave it a try and failed. At least you gave it a try. Mm-hmm. But I, there's something about when you are pursuing what, what that God-given dream inside you, um, when you take that step of faith, it's like, there's, there's a favor in your sales that you're going to, you're going to sense. And it's amazing. I'm living that right now. I'm a professional writer. I am writing for a living. All right. And, um, you know, it goes up and down and comes great and comes like, whoa, is as freelance, right? It's just how it goes, but I'm making a living. I've been making a living writing since two, 1999. Um, and actually before that, but I'm talking about a story writing. I was like doing commercials and stuff. So I have the, t- here's the action ready for the action item. Here's the take Go for it. Away. Let's go. All right, here it is. Try the doorknob. There's your takeaway. Try the doorknob. You see the door in front of you. That's that you know on the other side of that door is what you want to do. You know that door. You know what it is. Take one step. Try the doorknob. Take one step toward your dream and see what happens. Well, now tell tell me a story here because I've got a question for you. Okay, tell me a sure. story in this. What was the doorknob you tried the most that just didn't open until one day it opened? What doorknob did you try the most? Oh, well, um, oh, by the way, oh, there's something impossible. I'm going to tell you about that. I'll tell you about that in just a second. That's a great question. Um, as you look at the doorknob, as you look at the door, don't be afraid of the impossible. That's where miracles start. Mm. So here I am. I've never done any audio, written professionally any audio dramas. And what I kept persisting at, kept trying the doorknob, was uh, kept trying it. You're asking what, what I kept trying, correct? Yes. Yeah, um, that's where I kept writing for five years. I kept writing, like kept sending ideas to Paul for five years, just kept persisting at it, kept going, kept trying that doorknob. Mm. And it wasn't um, because I knew it was on the other side of that door. You know, it's like mm. my mom, my mom, I got an amazing mom. She's such an <laughs> encourager. And, and she kept telling me, I think you got something there. So that, that kept me going. So that encouragement kept me going. So just, just persist, keep persistent after that. Um, and you're going to find out your fire inside. And that fire inside comes from beyond you. And if there's no fire in there, I, you know, some people say, oh, yeah, I'd like to be a writer. You know, it'd be kind of cool. You know, it's like, uh, that's not really fire. That's sort of like a, a little burning ember, maybe. You know, <laughs> And, you know, if you want to be, that's fine. That's great. But if you really got a fire inside you to do it, you're going to, you're going to, when you get an opposition, something come against you in your story. You've got that. You're the you're the protagonist. You got your antagonist. If you really there's something you want more than anything else, you're going to go for it, and that's going to be your story. I, I would have to say you've been definitely blessed with that passion of this is what I want to do, and I would say I've I've definitely been blessed with that. There have been people that I have met that I'm asked I have asked, well, what do you want to do? I don't know. I, I was working at Chick Fil A, and I asked this one guy once. So uh, you going off to college? Eh, probably not. Well, okay. Do you have a plan? Do you want to move up in the corporate ladder here at Chick Fil A? Because I think he was a director or something. He mm-hmm. was like, he was highly promoted. Eh, probably not. It's not where I see myself. Okay. Well, where do you see yourself? I don't know. And I kept trying to draw out what this guy was interested in. What? Just I was mm-hmm. trying to make conversation, establish yeah. a common bond, trying to be trying to be nice. And I couldn't get anything out of him because the guy had no passion, mm. for almost anything. Wow, that's sad. And, yeah, no, it's, it, to me, it's <laughs> yeah. really sad. And I, I I, know there are people out there who they're passionate people about certain things, but they don't know the thing. Mm-hmm. How do you figure mm-hmm. out the thing? The thing. There's something I referred to it earlier. When you get around the thing, your heart beats a little faster. You get excited. It's something you can picture yourself doing without getting like, 
you know what? I could do this for, I would love to do this for free. Just if I could find a way to do it for free, I would mm. do it without getting paid. Um, this is something that, that it feeds you as you're doing it. It feeds you, it, it feeds something in you. And so um, that's what it, it, it's like when I get around directing, that's something I love to do. That's my passion. When I get around writing, it's just, it's something I just enjoy doing. And it's a lot of work. You know, it could be, it's a lot. I'm working on a mm -hmm. 240 page script right now. Okay. I'm doing it in about a week. That's for Jonathan Park. That's a lot of pages, right? But what keeps me going is I love what I do. I love what I do. I've, I've got a passion for it. So so you can tell you're getting close to your dream when it's it's like a magnet. You keep coming back to it. It's like, oh man, that's something I really want to do. It's like, it's just, it's, and other, your friends will tell you too. You know, you'll be out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You'll be talking about it. You know, and they'll say, you know, you talk about that a lot. You got to do something about it. You know, yeah, a good friend true. will do that. A good friend will call you to a, a, beckon you to a larger world. I, I know my, I know my parents were very scared when I told them I was going to be a professional actor. That's yes. what I was going to do. And I've been blessed to be put in a situation to where I can pursue that full time. Mm. It's hard, but I, I think, and that's another thing I, I'll talk to people and be like, what do you want to do? Well, I want to be a professional baseball player. Mm -hmm. then why aren't you out on a team uh, this was a long time ago then why aren't you out mm -hmm. playing for the college team i, I never make it mm. did you try mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well no uh-huh go try yeah. <laughs> yeah. and you know it, yeah there's a there's a verse that says with that vision the people perish i think in a way it's like the walking dead it's like you're yeah. i guess it's a zombie right it's, it's yeah. you're just you're just you're just if you're not pursuing that vision that's something you have in you and if you don't if it if it's not clear you're just floating along in life and i want to encourage you you know you don't want to wait till you're you know in your 70s or 80s and just say i wonder if i should have you know do it now and take do it it's now gonna, Take a risk. Take a risk. It's you know, I'm not saying give up your your regular job. You, you can pursue your regular job and pursue something on the side. Just put your toe in the water. Try the doorknob. Whatever metaphor works for you. You know, try your toe in the doorknob. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Okay, <laughs> just do it. Just do something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's, oh, All right. So sentence of the day, but it's it, it actually what you're talking about actually reminds me of a piece of writing advice that I received in college, uh, writing scripts. And mm -hmm. it was your character. It was writing your character, and mm -hmm. a phrase that my professor would use constantly is "relentless pursuit of intent." Whoa, that's so important in your story. In your story, when you're writing, and your own personal story, relentless pursuit with intent of intent of of intent of intent. Okay, got it. That's really good. There's something about that. It's just yeah. It and. That's a great story, and that's a great life story as well. What I love about all the things we talk about story, they can apply to your own life story as well, which is pretty cool. It's, so. it's it, something you want more than anything just, else, but we, something you need inside you. you got to can we just your antagonist? You know, take and, a second to yeah. appreciate how close storytelling and real life actually are. Like this, this is life advice. It's almost like it was designed that way mm, like somebody intelligent designed it like that way maybe yeah. so and maybe he's an author of a book that like <laughs> is out there for by the way he wrote two books there's a book of life too but anyway just just that's his that's his next one coming out yeah um, yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> i can't wait for that release <clears throat> oh it's amazing I, I think you're in there yeah i, 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 hope, so. I hope so <laughs> <laughs> oh man well it's been great talking with you and yeah and, Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And just, just, and you guys uh, just listening, watching, whatever you're doing um, as you're participating with us, um, go for it. Go for it. Uh, that, that thing in you that's like, you know, I really, I'm, I'm going to nudge you. Go for it. Try the doorknob, try it out. Just and, take and one I, step. And, and I'll see what say, happens. and I'll say, dear listener, uh, listening to this, uh, people who are listening to this are very passionate. I, I know we talked to Dominic. He is a very, very passionate guy in what he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 JD, I know he's got his own thing, but he listens very passionate about what they do, but there are other people out there who are very passionate about storytelling or what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. If you know somebody who feels a little bit rudderless or whatnot, se send, send this particular episode to them, try to encourage them with this episode because this is their moment to go do the thing <laughs> go do the thing there's there's go there's do a motto the thing 
Exactly. That's that's honest, John. That's honestly been a motto of my wife and I for a long time. That's awesome. That's the go reason the we're in this industry is we're telling each other constantly, "Go do the thing." I love it. I love we're it. Going that's to really do good. The thing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, you know, as as we're talking about this, before we go, I just want to give you a little glimpse into what we're going to do in the future here. This is part of our story, Brian and me. And, um, and Becky as well is when she comes on board too. That's cool. Uh, she was there at the very beginning and she's going to swing back around and help us. I have a feeling. So we'll see. Well, uh, actually, but, actually, I'll just tell you right now. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your prayers on that. She actually just started on a film two days ago. Oh, cool. So she has officially jumped ship into the film industry. Wow. So that's she'll, exciting. She'll, she'll, she's, I don't know if she's home yet because Atlanta traffic is, um, oh, yeah. can, can probably rival LA. So, uh, huh. She'll be on board at in some capacity. We'll oh, see. that's very cool. Well, here's thank you. That'd be awesome. She's she's amazing. So here's what we're talking about doing, guys. Uh, I'll I'm I'm in uh, California. Everybody's guys in Colorado. Colorado everybody's guys. So in the <laughs> south, it's all y'all. All y'all. All y'all. Okay, all I can do the south. I can do this other thing too because I came from the south as well. So anyway, all y'all, all you guys, Yin's guys from Pittsburgh, all those. I want to tell you something. Um, we've got, Brian and I have some big plans for you. We want to, I, I'll give you just a hint, plant a little seed here. We're going to do a seminar, like a webinar, right? Online. And I, I'm setting it up where I can just give you just all I got, just to, like maybe a three hour thing, a six hour, whatever. We're going to, we're going to put it together for you and it's going to be absolutely free. Like it'll be for you. It's our gift to you. And what we'll do is we're going to lead that, use that. There's no catch. It's just totally free, but that's coming up. So we're going to look at launching something like that in January. January. So that's what we're looking at. Yep. And I'll, we'll give you a date and all that. And that will lead into, we're going to have something else, like a three-day summit, a writing summit. We're going to invite some people in, some famous kind of people. And, uh, and we're going to talk about writing. You can do, this can be in person and online where we're going to talk about writing and getting you started on your story. It's like if, if you're reading, if you're in a stuck point, if you have trouble getting started, if you're into halfway through and you're like, ah, I don't know what happened. Or it's like, I'm having trouble with this. We're, we're going to coach you through all that. So we're going to have a whole package for you. We're going to have that free thing, the free webinar, which is going to be amazing. We're going to have, um, it's part of the, another thing we're going to offer to you is like coaching sessions, all this kind of this is what we want to do for you. So get, get you up and going. I feel a passion for this because part of my passion is to sow into next generation creatives. And that doesn't mean necessarily an age thing. Like you could be 60, 70 and you're starting into writing. That's okay. Whatever the next generation is, I'm here to sow into you and be your champion. So that's, that's we got that coming up. So just want to give you a little hint and uh, we'll be doing that. We'll be launching that sometime in January and we're excited about it. Very excited about it. Well, thank you, yeah. John. This was a very, very, very encouraging episode. Just hearing. I her, hope so. You knock on those doors and and make it through the doors. It's a, uh, it's a uh, very, very encouraging that to hear someone who did the thing, who did the thing. Yes, I'm so thing. blessed, and I had people encouraging me. So, I want to pay that forward. I want to encourage you. So go for it. Go do the thing. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Story Chat. If you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions for John or feedback on the show, please email us at storychatwithjohn at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.